Hey guys, it's AppleSex here, and today I'll be doing a What's on My Mac video. In this video, I'll detail all of the applications that are available in my dock, as well as the majority of the applications in my launchpad. Now, to keep this video brief, I'll give very brief descriptions on a lot of the applications. That way, this video doesn't go on for 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes because it could easily do so to talk about all my applications. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and head straight to the dock where we can skip Finder all the way through iMovie because obviously those are built into OS X. The next application right here is ironically the application I'm using right now and that is ScreenFlow. It's the best screencasting software basically for any platform, Mac or PC, and it has great video editing options. At $99 it is a little bit expensive but I feel like the price is warranted. Next two we can also skip because they are also installed in Mac OS X and then we head over to Reflection which is an app that I do want to give you guys a quick demo of. It's really neat. So on your iPhone, if your iPhone is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your MacBook Air, you can easily AirPlay your iPhone 4S, in my case, to your MacBook Air. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to load up my iPhone, and we're going to select Cameron's MacBook Air, and then hit continue. And there you guys go. My iPhone 4S is obviously on my MacBook Air screen right now. The responsiveness is actually pretty good. However, you can see there is some lag sometimes. But generally, it's fairly quick, and what I'm doing on my iPhone is uh, really what is happening on the screen. So it's definitely really nice, great application at just $15. So the next applications in my dock are Google Chrome and iTunes. However, I'll be skipping over to those applications because Google Chrome is already so well known, and iTunes is obviously built into Mac OS X. Spotify, on the other hand, is a competitor with iTunes. Spotify gives users all you can eat access to their over 7 million song library for just 5 to 10 bucks a month. While the service is great, it's not available in all countries at the time, but still be sure to check out if it is available in your country. Alright, so my next application here is Firefox, which I really just have as a backup of Chrome and Safari. I'm sure all of you guys already know what Firefox is, so let's move on to the next application, which is Sparrow, which is a minimalistic email client available on the Mac App Store and, of course, also iOS. It's, in my opinion, the best mail client available on the Mac, easily beating Apple's mail application and also beating Outlook 2011, but obviously it depends on your needs. You might actually need to have Outlook. Um, next here is Messages, which is essentially allows you to iMessage users on iPad and iPhone. It comes standard in OS X 10.8 Mountain Line, but at the time of this video, it's a beta application, so I still have it on my Mac. It's pretty buggy, so hopefully that gets fixed. Next here is TweetBot, which I already did a video on that. I'll put a link or an annotation somewhere up here. It's already looking very promising, and we all know that TweetBot is pretty much the most functional and best Twitter client available for Mac, iPad, and iPhone. Next here is Pages, which I have as an alternative to Microsoft Word. However, I have really haven't used it too much. Hopefully, I'll use it more in the future, but I'm looking into it. Um, it's 15 bucks on the Mac App Store, so it is a lot cheaper than these applications right here. Next here is Reader, which is also available for iPad and iPhone. It's a really great RSS client, or in this case, a Google Reader client um, that works really nice and syncs across all devices. So definitely be sure to check out Reader. So this is the Microsoft Office Suite. There's not much that I need to say because you guys have likely already seen it. But in case you haven't seen it, I still recommend that you check out Microsoft Office over pages at the moment. We'll see if that changes later down the road. But for right now, this is still, or these applications are still really good. Last up here, we have Clean My Mac, which is a great Mac utility that easily finds tons upon tons of system junk that sits around on your Mac. As you can see, it's already found nearly a gig. It usually finds a gig to two gigs, maybe even more if you really haven't cleaned your Mac in a long time. I haven't done this in about one or two weeks, but you can already see how much junk can accumulate in your Mac, including logs, language files, caches, and things like that. So definitely check out Clean My Mac on the internet. So now we're going to take a look at the applications in my launch pad. You'll notice that the first page of three contains Apple installed applications. So we'll slide to the left and begin with the second page, which really is my only other page of applications on my launch pad because the third page contains some junk like Microsoft Silverlight and Adobe Flash Player Manager or something of that nature. So let's go ahead and start with the first two and those two are games, Real Racing 2 and Angry Birds. Both of these games have iOS counterparts available for the iPhone and the iPad. They're really great applications, and I feel that these two are one of the best, or some of the best, available on the Mac App Store. So we've already gone over Google Chrome, Firefox, TweetBot, Sparrow, and Reflection. So of course there is Dropbox. If you haven't heard of Dropbox, you really seriously need to check out this service. 
It syncs your files across multiple devices, including Android, iPhone, iPad, iOS, Mac, PC. It's really great, and you get two gigs of free storage. We've also gone over Reader and Spotify, and then we get to iAntivirus, which is really on my Mac as a precautionary measure, as there have been some more susceptibility issues on the Mac, but it's generally not an issue, so I don't really have any serious software other than iAntivirus. Clean My Drive is really, I feel, a lighter version of Clean My Mac, but it is available for free on the Mac App Store, so I still recommend you check out Clean My Drive. The Unarchiver is really just used for, as you would imagine, unarchiving zip files and files of that nature. I don't use that application too much, but I have it just in case I need it. We've already gone over Clean My Mac, and Opera is really the backup of the backup of my web browser of choice, which is Google Chrome. So you guys can check out Opera, but I still feel like Google Chrome and Firefox and Safari are loads better than Opera. Mobile Mouse Server allows you to, if you have the Air Mouse application installed on your iPhone or iPad, control your Mac wirelessly using that iPhone or iPad. It's pretty neat, but you need this application to do that. So BitCasa is a great service that allows you to have unlimited storage in the cloud for just 10 bucks a month. Now, obviously there's no such thing as truly unlimited, but BitCasa gives you, I believe, on a scale of 570 terabytes of free space on the cloud. That's right, terabytes. So definitely be sure to check out BitCasa. It is just 10 bucks a month. Check My Temp is a great, um, you know, application for monitoring your internals on your Mac, especially if you're editing a video or something like that. But I don't use this application because my MacBook Air fans hardly ever turn on unless, of course, I'm editing or processing a video. Next here is Tiny Umbrella, which is really just used to back up your SHSH blobs, but nonetheless, it's still a very important application to have on your Mac. We've already talked about Pages, so we'll go to iExplorer, which allows you to browse your iPhones or iPads or iPod Touches file system when it's jailbroken. It's pretty neat if you don't want to open SSH or if you don't have iFile, so definitely be sure to check out iExplorer. iBooks Author I really have on my Mac just because I think it's pretty cool. Um, I've you know played around with it, but they're really is no purpose for me at the time, but if you are into making textbooks or you're an educator, um, definitely check out iBooks Author. Forismatic is a pretty neat application that claims to inspire you or spark an idea, so if we hit spark an idea, you'll see that you'll get an inspirational or idea sparking quote right here that you can easily share on Twitter, Facebook, and other services as well, so it's pretty neat, and it is available for free on the Mac App Store. Better Snap Tool brings Windows 7 functionality to Mac OS X, so as you can see, I can easily snap my window to the right half of the screen, to the left half of the screen, full screen, vice versa on your Mac. It's really neat and it works extremely well. Next here we have Alfred and Found, which are very similar utilities for the Mac. Alfred allows you to search your Mac and then Found allows you to search your Mac Dropbox as well as Google Drive, Google Docs, and some other uh, services like that. So Found is pretty cool and they're both available on the Mac App Store. Next here is ScreenFlow, which of course we've already gone over. And then here's a voice recorder that I've used to record a couple of videos. It is pretty nice, but I haven't found a reason to upgrade to the premium version. And then lastly, we have Adobe Reader, which I just used as a backup, a preview for the Mac. Don't really use it. And then, of course, we have our Microsoft Office suite that I've already gone over in this video. So, well, guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you believe there's an application that should be installed on my Mac, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below so that way I know what other applications I should check out for my Mac. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. And as always, please feel free to hit that subscribe button up there for more Mac videos, jailbreak videos, reviews, and more. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching.